Hi, Jeff from Jeff TV. How's it going? I thought I'd uh, take the chance, the opportunity to talk about um, my, some of my experiences with archery, uh, sort of through some of the bows that I have and uh, the techniques and shooting and things like that. And uh, what I wanted to really discuss was, well, personally, I wanted to like cover my personal philosophy in archery, um, but also um, I think there are some pitfalls that you can get into when you start archery, particularly the archery I'm interested in, which is Asiatic archery, which is what you probably call traditional archery. It's, it's the sort of archery where you have um, a bow that uh, it doesn't have sights on it. it, it doesn't have any sighting mechanism at all apart from the good old, you know, grade A human eyeball. Um, and it's, uh, it's part of a tradition, uh, Asi Asiatic archery, it's part of a tradition that goes back thousands of years and it's uninterrupted as opposed to say the western tradition of shooting there was a bit of an interruption from the end of the middle ages the renaissance period when firearms came in and um archery fairly much pretty much disappeared and the longbow usage particularly no one knew how to shoot a longbow they had to rediscover it so it's uh, an interrupted tradition i'm rather interested in the asiatic tradition which is an uninterrupted tradition of course they had firearms and things as well they're introduced but the cultural groups still kept going um, with uh, their archery practices uh, and they have very unique bow types and I thought I would put together a sort of series of, of uh, videos talking about some of those things it's quite interesting I, I love it so I thought I'd tell you guys um, so yeah the first bow that I actually um, bought um, before I knew what I was doing um, I thought oh I'll try something exotic so I, I bought you know a Mongol bow and um, the string's gonna fall on the floor I can guarantee you yeah so um, and, and I thought, oh, well, you know, someone in Europe will know how. I'm just going to pick up the string. Someone in Europe will know um, how, to, uh, how to make bows and how to put them together. And I thought, oh, well, the Hungarians are good. You know, they're a steppe culture. They should know about Asiatic bows. Um, so I bought a bow from a company uh, called, it's from a shop called the Bow Shop EU. Um, it's the name of the bow. It's the New Mongol Bow. And it was a 40 pound um, pull, supposed to be 40 pounds at uh, 28, um, cost me 139 euros uh, plus 99 euros in shipping, which because I live in Australia, it's pretty expensive. Um, and, and I got a bow, which, you know, when I first started shooting, I thought, oh, it's pretty good. Um, it actually only pulls about 37.5 at 28. I'm just going to put the string on. That's the longer one. So that's the one that goes at the bottom. Um, I'll give you a sort of a look around the bow. Uh, you can see it here. It's got these very big sears. It's fiberglass bow. Um, uh, there's a wooden handle in there uh, and wooden sears there. And this is fiberglass on this side. The limb is fiberglass. Uh, this is the arrow pass. Now, because this is a Mongol bow, in modern uh, times, the uh, the Mongols actually shoot in like in the Western tradition, where they actually have the they don't uh, use a thumb draw, or they or rather they do use a thumb draw in some instances, but they they put the arrow on the left hand side like they do in the Western tradition, but they don't uh, they don't do a thumb draw with the arrow on the right hand side. It's on the left hand side. So um, I'm just going to string this, and we're going to sort of discuss the bow and uh, we'll see where we go from there. So let's put that in there. I'm going to do the step through method. Now, stringing the bow, this one is not too bad, actually. It's quite easy to pull back. Um, the string goes on easily enough. You can see it's got these um, string bridges. Here, yeah, they're just wood um, on each side. There's no pads or anything. Um, the bow itself is um quite fairly chunky i suppose you would say um the brace height on there it's only about my i know that that distance there to my thumb's about six inches so that's only 
about five and a half inches but if you put it any higher you can see that it won't actually sit on here um, it's an interesting thing actually because what happens is as the bow goes forward the string sort of snaps on here and gives the arrow a little bit of a flick it's quite interesting if you've ever shot a long bow and then you shoot one of these there's this interesting acceleration that happens at the end of the actual shot now you can see that the the arrow passes on this side uh, it's, um, it's a piece of wood that's it's been glued on really um, so um, traditionally mongol bows they were made out of um, the bio composite sort of uh, composition of uh, it was horn uh, on the outside wood through the middle and then on, on this on the belly of the bow on this side uh, it was sinew and they all glued together with uh, fish glue i think it's fish bladder glue originally this is fiberglass um i know that it's uh, if i could afford a, a biocomposite bow you know <laughs> i'd be a wealthy man um uh so yeah so i thought i'd um sort of talk about this bow in some depth um the the bow itself it came with that sleeve that you saw so it's just a very simple cotton sleeve it came with the the string um it's got a fairly good string serving on it uh, this is several years old this bow now so it's um it's lasted well actually it's lasted pretty well uh the um actually i was going to say that, that with the mongol bows what they did was to protect them from the weather because they're very sensitive to moisture and uh, the original biocomposite bows they used to wrap them in leather sometimes it was sewn on but you can see this is kind of a crude attempt at making the same effect but it disguises the, the fiberglass limb on the inside so that's that's pretty good uh yeah so um weighs 840 grams that's quite on the heavy side but if you look at the how broad the limbs are they actually they're narrow here they, they taper they go to about i don't know about five or six centimeters there and they come in again the sears are ash wood they're really quite sturdy i mean the whole thing is you can't hardly you just can't move it so but that's good you know um that's good for a beginner because it means when you're trying to string the bow it's much easier because it's just so stiff um Right, so I did some a few sort of measurements on it. Uh, the length of the bow when it's strung from there to there, from point to point, if you like, that's 56 inches. Uh, and the from knock to knock, so when it's uh, unstrung, if you if you measure from knock to knock all the way down here and up to here, uh, that's 54.5 inches. So that gives you what they call an F value of uh, 0.55. So if you do the calculation, the reason you have an F value is you, um, if you know the poundage of the bow uh, and you know what the F value is, you, you multiply them together and it tells you what the minimum grain weight is uh, for an arrow so that you, you're not going to... Um, because the thing about using a bow is if you, if you use an arrow that's too light it's, it's like pulling the string back and just letting go what they call dry firing which is something you must never do with the bow all right you always got to have an arrow there i mean you can draw it like this that's fine you know that's not a problem but you must never let go of it um yeah so uh the grain weight uh was, in, was an old weight i think it was for measuring gold originally uh 7, grains to the pound uh it basically works out to about 15 0.432 grains per gram uh, so i did the f value calculation with this and it says that the uh, minimum arrow weight is 318 grains um that's kind of on the lighter side uh you know i, I would have thought something this heavy fiberglass particularly fiberglass is renowned actually for having a, a bit of weight to it and as this bow is realistically um two possibly three times heavier than a than, a, than a, an original bow that's quite a bit of weight uh moving forward on these limbs um so yeah let's have a look um i think we'll, we'll just draw it uh it's got the interesting geometry of this means that when you pull it back you sort of get relief as you pull it back but so i'm just going to use a like a just all my fingers on here so i can hold it easily now with this as well because of where the arrow goes through which is see this point here 
right the arrow has basically got to pass through there or pass on that side so that means you can't hold the bow in the middle you've got to sort of hold it underneath which means you, your your wrist is a bit cranked back so that's something you want to watch out for for the geometry of the handle when they're really extreme like this when they come inside i mean it's a nice big handle it gives you plenty to grip hold of and the leather's great it, you certainly don't feel that it's going to slip out of your hand i mean you're only going to be gripping with three fingers like that anyway um but yeah you do have to sort of push underneath a little bit more but as long as it's in the web of your hand here then it's okay uh so yeah so pulling it you sort of feel not much and then it starts to pull straight away and this bow there's no recommendation of what the maximum draw length was which is something that you really need to know because particularly in the asiatic style of shooting you tend to pull the arrows back way beyond where you would with western archery western archery you get you sort of 28 inches up to here you know and maybe sort of an inch or two back it might go back as far as 30 but you can go back as far as 32 or some of them like the manchu bows you 35 inches draw so you have these enormous long arrows um but this once you get it to 28 once you get to that point there it really starts to stack you know so if you're going to draw uh, a draw curve of the weight it sort of comes up fairly steeply uh, sort of keeps at the same sort of level and then as you get past 28 it just goes right up so it's not the kind of bow that you're gonna try i mean it won't go any further if i stand back here look i get to there it's not really gonna go any further it, you can feel it we say stack um it means that it's just that's kind of at the end points of where the elasticity is with the bow and it's it's just not going to move faster it's not going to go first further than that um so what i want to do now now that i've sort of talked about the manufacturer of the bow uh some of the features um and what this is and what it isn't obviously it's not an original mongol bow and i, I think these sears are probably a bit too long and i to be honest with you, a length of, what do we say, um, 56 inches. Uh, I think the Mongol bows are normally like 48, so this is enormous. This is almost like a Manchu length bow, which maybe that's what they're trying to achieve. But they didn't call it a Manchu, and um, they specifically called it a new Mongol bow. Um, so, I don't know, actually, I'm a little confused about that. But anyway... For a beginner's bow, it's uh, it wasn't too expensive, and, it, and it, it's uh, we'll see how it shoots, shall we? Yeah, let's do that. Let's get into some shooting. So I'm standing here, um, got a little target just over there, and what I'm going to do is just to sort of um, give you an idea of what it's like to shoot this bow. Um, I've got three sets of arrows. Um, remember, the minimum grain weight was. Um, 318 grains uh, this is a 400 grain wooden arrow um, which uh, just has a wooden knock uh, I'm going to shoot this first and we're going to sort of see the effects that the uh, how the arrow affects the bow um, so um, remember 318 grains this is 400 so this is much higher than the, than the minimum that they recommend or that the, the f value recommends in fact they didn't recommend anything so i'm just having to kind of work it out as i go along so we're just going to shoot this make sure i'm going to use the thumb draw and there's quite a lot of vibration and a fair amount of hand shock it's like as at the point of release as the as the string slaps onto those sears the shock that comes through the handle is a lot there's quite a lot there let's try that again another 400 grain yeah that's um quite aggressive that's remember i was saying that the weight in here the, the fiberglass uh limbs and the fact that this is two to three times heavier than the original mongol bow this is um you can really feel it okay so let's let's go out this is 500 grains this is a carbon arrow um it's got a plastic knock field point on it um this is what i shoot about a lot of my bows let's have a look see what this does it feels a little bit better but 
still you can feel this kind of heavy vibration afterwards through the boats it's really quite aggressive on your on the left hand um, yeah you can hear it as well it's quite loud right now these are really heavy these are um, they've got dirt on the end as well because I've stuck them in the ground these are these weigh 650 grains so they're twice more than twice as heavy as what you need so here we go now that was interesting that was interesting let's do that again one more and I get it so I got a good conclusion okay yeah that was a good center shot actually it's good um yeah so what happened then was when I went up to the heavier grain arrows uh, the hand shock really calmed down and the vibration stopped very quickly and just had this kind of boom sensation and then a little bit of vibration after so I think that sort of bears out the the evidence really the fact that this bow is so heavy and uh, one way to get around that with a heavy fiberglass bow which you should be aware of particularly as a beginner is um, if you're gonna um, shoot them don't start off for the minimum weight because you'll be quite shocked you'll, you'll be you'll be giving yourself like tendonitis or something in your arm in your left arm uh make sure you go for a fairly heavy arrow i'd i'd start at least at 500 grains i mean this is 40 pounds um so ideally the rule of thumb is 10 grains per pound so you'd start off at a 400 um, which we did start with um but that felt too light that was quite shocking actually uh, i wouldn't like to shoot that for more than you know the two shots that i did it was it was jerking my whole body the 500s you could sense that it would felt better but by the time i got up to the 650s it was way better and and i, I could probably shoot that all day um and i have done in fact with this bow so i i know i mean obviously i kind of knew what was going to happen but i've never actually kind of compared them directly i uh, just always went for the heavier arrows anyway but it was interesting to use the lighter arrows um just to sort of get the sensation of what was happening and really it was well yeah it was like well jaw was, was vibrating <laughs> from using them anyway so if i think what we can say is if you're going to get a bow uh, and you don't want to pay for a biocomposite bow which costs quite a lot of money um, you, you want to start off with a fiberglass bow the benefits of starting off with a fiberglass bow are they're pretty much indestructible you you can't really break them you know um, obviously don't leave them in a the car you know when it's 50 60 degrees in Australia that's not going to help um, but in terms of um, their sort of longevity it's going to last years and years and years and years you're going to get a lot of use out of it but the downside is the hand shock and the vibration because it's fiberglass and i mean to be honest with you this bow is kind of a bit old school with the way that they make fiberglass bows now they, they're um they're much lighter they're considerably lighter like two-thirds the weight of this one or less um, so yeah this is a bit of old school um, but again as a beginner bow you know it's um, a good starting place and uh, it's good I use it now for like when people come over and they want to learn how to shoot and I, I get this bow out and um, I've got the heavier arrows and you know they have a good shooting experience so that's what you have to do okay see you next time <laughs>